Welcome on this Mother's Day to the dawning of the golden age of miracles. Wonderful, wonderful. So our, our speaker spark today, the, the topic is watering the God seed, how to feel blessed when stressed. When life's journey includes bumps, knockdowns, trials, tribulations, and dark nights of our souls, which can take us out of commission, how amazing we are when getting fed what we need. Our next speaker specializes in serving up nutritious vittles to help us find our way to health, peace, and understanding. She opened her first healing center 18 years ago and is owner of Soul Spirit Salt Spa in Horsham, Pennsylvania. She is trained in IET, she's a master teacher, a Reiki master, reconnective healing, PH miracle coach, hypnotherapist, spiritual and nutritional advisor, and my personal favorite, she's a halo therapist. She is a pure channel of love and light and has been an intuitive and gifted healer for over 20 years. Her techniques include deep breathing, guided imagery, sound healing, aromatherapy, and ionic cellular foot detoxification and salt therapy. Please help me give a warm circle welcome to Dottie Janati. Hi, everybody. How are you? I went through and saw all the beautiful souls on here, so it's lovely to be here. Thank you for the invitation, and thank you for your all showing up and doing your work. Um, so I was asked to share a little bit about, I don't want to share too much about that, but when I was uh, 25 years old, I opened my first hair salon. I've been a hairdresser for 42 years, and, and in that process, I realized I was helping individuals but didn't really understand it fully. And... Um, speed forward it was a very tough time because i had a, a, a i was a single mother and speeding forward i wound up getting married and then had a try had two children and had a beautiful life and was really really happy about that life but um darkness came in even though i had a nice life darkness came in and i didn't understand i had a beautiful life so why was i unhappy and it just had to do with my soul and i didn't even know what that meant at the time and so I wound up doing some soul searching and I kept asking God questions and God kept leading me to answers. And there was this miracles that kept happening and it happened for three straight years. Um, and I was blessed and fortunate enough to meet my teacher, which many of you know, um, Yanni Manianis was my teacher and he had taught me so many beautiful, wonderful things that I didn't know. And he turned me within. And the more I went within, the more I got to realize um, that, that inside job um, had to be done within me so I could serve my brothers and my sisters on the planet, which is really what my passion is, is to help my people on the planet feel better about themselves and understand. But the first thing I had to do was go within and find the beauty in myself. Being a beautician, I saw the beauty and I helped people create beauty outside. But then here we are all these years later and I'm being drawn within to tell to help people bring the beauty from the inside out. It doesn't matter what this looks like. It matters what is in here. And so that was a heart journey and a soul journey. And I embarked upon it and miracle after miracle happened. And then all hit the fan because I got divorced and I got scared. I got scared, very scared. Even though I had a house, I bought a house and everything. I was really scared. And um, in the process of moving to this house, I already had a hair a healing center. I already had a hair salon with two healing rooms. I was teaching and doing healing work. And then I was, I was moving my hair salon to my home so I could raise my kids. And all of a sudden I was getting all these phone calls for healing work, but I wasn't really doing a lot of healing work. And I was like, well, I don't even have a healing room in my house. So that was God's way of telling me that I need to put a healing room in. So my children lost the room. We're in that room now. I just retransformed this room again into my yoga room for Zoom because my business is closed right now. But anyway, so I, that was my, one of my messages. So the, mirror, the universe has always given us messages and it's our, our, the more we clear the fog and go within, the more we can see the pieces, the puzzles, the, 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 the billboards, the two by fours against our temples, which I had plenty of those. Um, and we get to see 
how we're being fed by the universe. The universe is always feeding us, constantly feeding us, but we're not always, our antennas are not always up and feeling it. So that was a very interesting journey. And then um, seven years ago, seven, eight years ago now, I ended up with a heart issue, a physical heart issue. And um, I don't do drugs, medical, not interested in doctors. So I went to an irdiologist, which a lot of you know, Bill Dunn, who's no longer on the planet. And he diagnosed me with a heart issue um, and gave me a product and it did nothing. And weeks later, um, this product came across my desk, which I had to laugh because it was the num it was called Soul, S-O-U-L. My business name was Soul Spirit Connection, which I named it 16 years prior to that. And I started laughing and I ordered the product and I it started taking it, it took it took away my physical problems because I believe that the universe is always feeding us what it is that we need to be able to get us on the right path to do the real work that we're here to do, which is our soul work. And um, my, all my symptoms went away in three days. And many of you know, I became a very big part of that company. Um, and I used to be at shows and selling the product. I still sell the product, but I don't do a lot with it. Well, anyway, to make a long story short, in meditation one day, I got, it's time to do it. It's time to open the healing center. Like 16 years later, I don't want a healing center. I want to do yoga on the beach and teach people yoga on the beach. That's where I want to go. And it kept happening in my meditations. And it was God's way of saying, it's time for you to open the healing center that you've always wanted. I was afraid because I had somebody coming in from the company. I was one of the top distributors in the country and um, the money was starting to come in. It was enough to pay rent, even though it was a small rent. It still was a scary rent because I still was a single mother and, you know, doing things. So I ended up trusting the universe and I opened the center and it went pretty well. I was doing meditations on Wednesday nights. I had already done meditation for people for uh, three or four years before that on Wednesday nights. And I wound up growing a center and, and I just kept asking God to send people and he did. And then two and a half later, two and a half years in, I got that um, this thing about a salt room. I'm like, what is a salt room? You know, I don't know what a salt room is. I had salt lamps, which is one right here. I have a big one right here. I didn't know what it was. So I wound up investigating and whenever we get really excited about something, that's our, our soul speaking to us. It's like, we can't not listen to that. And so I would be up at two, two or three in the morning every day investigating salt, did all that investigations and found out how salt heals the body. We are 70% salt water. And I won't go into all of that because I'm not here about talking about the business, but um, I embarked upon that journey and I was amazed at what was happening and the souls that were coming in were coming in. And I, I laugh because I say to this day, what does salt do? Salt is a tenderizer. So I believe that God sent, called me to put the salt room in. It was tenderizing people so they would get the real work that I do. And I, my whole business expanded and exploded. And I wound up moving my business last year to, and I doubled my space into Horsham. And I walk around that place and I'm just in awe that I get to live here and do this. Like, this is really my journey. I mean, for probably the first six months, I used to cry all, every day because I couldn't believe this is how I was living. And um, the crazy part is then my classes exploded, then my uh, everything, everything took off and the business started to really grow. And of course, and then just hit and now we don't know where it's all going, but it's okay. It's okay. But the part I want to share with you is that when we're feeding, when we're feeding that part of ourselves, that is our soul, we're feeding the divinity that was instilled in us before we were born. And we can dance with divinity. It's up to us. It's our choice. And there's one piece that um, when I was doing my center, it almost took me out. I mean, I, I, I took me six months to recover from putting doing the center. It almost took me out completely, emotionally, physically, energetically, everything. It just was really a lot of money went out, more money than I wanted to. But anyway, to make a long story short, I had one room to do. My, my, my contractor had to leave because there was a death in the family, and I had to do the kitchen myself. And I remember pulling the floor up. And then I had this much, two inches all the way around the entire room that I had to pull up. And it took me probably about four or five hours. I had to score it, the carpet. And it, walls were built on top of it. Well, you can't put a floor in if you still have that there. And I was, I was bawling my eyes out, crying and screaming, going, what is it that you want from me? What is it that you want from me? And I got surrender. I'm like, I'm surrendered. I can't surrender anymore. Well, to make a long story short, I surrendered and 
I just sat there for hours and just kept doing it in prayer and gratitude, saying my names and just, and it was so transformative. And now I have a sign in my healing center that is 99 inches long and two and a half feet tall that says surrender. And it is gorgeous. And that when I was, I knew that that wall was meant for something special. So my center is when you walk in the door, you walk in, you see the surrender sign, surrender the ego at the door. And when you walk out, that's the first thing you see when you're, the last thing you see when you're leaving is the surrender sign and it's surrender to the light within. And what happens is when people come to the place, it's a soul sanctuary. It helps them heal their soul. People say it, people don't even know what that means to say that to me. But, you know, we're, is the, is the cup half, is the, is the cup half full or half empty as we're always being asked. And that's a check-in point, a check-in point. Am I, am I, feeding my cells do i feel stressed or do i feel blessed whatever we're doing in our life is it making me feel stressed or blessed if it's making me feel stressed you have a choice to change that energy and then feel blessed because you are such a miracle you were born that way and you'll die that way but when we honor those pieces within ourselves we can dance with divinity on a daily basis on a moment to moment basis it's every breath is a new choice. And, you know, it, are we plugging into the light? Are we plugging into darkness? So I, I had two new clients in yesterday. Um, I'm open for, you know, some appointments. But I, I had two new clients in the store yesterday, and we were talking, and they said something. And she said, well, he's not as spiritual as I am, and blah, 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 blah. And I said something about, you know, when we come on the planet, you know, remember the, the old uh, bulletin board that, not bulletin board, uh, phone, phone pegboard that, Lucille Ball used to plug into. So you would see that board and you would plug in and you come on the planet and you say, I'm a good mother, I'm gonna be a good hairdresser, I'm gonna be a good you know, father or a good musician. And that's what you plug into. And then time goes on and you're like, okay, well, this isn't all working for me. Well, you have all those things you can plug into. That's our destiny, that's our divine, that's our divinity. We, we have that access to us. But and then sometimes we'll unplug from this, unplug from this, and plug into more things. And as we get older, we realize we have the ability to just live in a beautiful world, no matter what's going on out there, if we've done our inner work. And is it easy? Absolutely not. No one ever said it was going to be easy. But the thing is, what are you plugging into? You're plugging into the darkness of the light. So talking about God seed. So we're all God seed. We come on the planet. We're a God seed. We can dance with divinity if we choose, if we plug into the light. What does every seed do when it crumbs out of the ground? It grows and it comes a little, little bud and then it becomes bigger. And if it's a tree, it becomes a big, beautiful tree and then it gives fruit. Well, we have the ability to bring fruit. That is by feeding our soul what we need, what we want. We are then able to feed others, but we have to feed ourselves. We can't beat ourselves up. You know, I tell my clients and my students, are you spitting in God? Or if you're if you're beating yourself up, shrek whack-a-mole, like a big, big whack-a-mole, you know, when you go to the thing and you whack-a-mole, that's what we do to ourselves. We whack-a-mole ourselves. It's like, but we use a shrek whack-a-mole, okay? Big one. And we beat ourselves up. And what we're doing is we're spitting in the creator's face. We are so loved. We are so protected. We are so, everything that happens to us happens to us because it's supposed to. And if we stop fighting and we get plugged into that energy, we can then feed that, that God seed, feed it the right water, feed it exercise, feed it the right breath. Are you breathing in deeply? That's what my soul room does. It helps people open their chest to breathe better. And when you're breathing, you're getting the oxygen. When you're getting the oxygen, you're getting the health. So it all, it all plays pieces together. It all comes together as a full piece. So it's food, thought, actions, um, and also movement. Are we moving? If we can just move our breath and things will change. Um, what is in your mind moment to moment? Is it trash or is it good? Am I honoring my creator by loving me or am I whack a mole me? Which am I doing? So, you know, I, as I've gotten older, I've learned to love myself. And that was not, a, I'm not a, that's not a boastful thing. That's a God-given 
great gift that I give back to the creator because he created, he, she created me in his, her image. And how dare I spit in God's face? I spit in God's face for so many years and I still get upset about that. And I bend on my knees a lot because there are chakras in our knees, the back of our knees when we bend down and we get on our, we get in prayer, which I do often. I did a lot when I was working on my healing center. <laughs> um, when we get into that pace and we, 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 we get in prayer and gratitude, I sometimes will fall in gratitude and prayer and just tears of happiness and joy. It doesn't matter what's going on out there. It matters what is going on in here. What is your connection to your divinity? What are you doing to, to fill yourself up with that beautiful love and light? There's, there's, oh, where did I read it? Oh, so every moment and every, we have the ability to feel worthy of that energy. Look at everything that we've been given here. We've been given unconditional love. We've been, we can blanket ourselves in the sun and feel the warmth, the moon, feel that the moon, how it feeds us that light that we really are desperately looking for. The trees, when you look at a tree, you see the magnitude of the tree, but the tree doesn't have to do anything. It just has to be. The more we can just be, the more we're in alignment with our divinity and we can then just go go easily and not make it hard listening to the birds and feeding our cells and our souls listening to the ocean oh my goodness the ocean itself i have people come in my soul room and i i play the ocean music and they're transported back to the ocean it's a beautiful thing and you're getting all this oxygen just from being you're getting more oxygen by being in the salt room for 45 minutes than you are if you're at the beach for one day. Looking at the beautiful flowers right now, we're, we're surrounded by flowers. We live in a heaven, but yet we put ourselves in a hell because we are not feeding our God seeds. We are not feeding it. Looking at poppies. Sorry about that, guys. Welcome to Zoom. Happens to me too in my yoga classes. Anyway, so we were talking about the feeling of, of, of feeding ourselves what helps us. Kittens, um, loved ones. When you just think about someone that you love, it warms your heart. That is a, and as you, it's not just a thought process. It's a, it, so when you think about something, it makes you feel really good and feel really loved. But when you feel that and let that go around you, it's almost like a blanket of love that God is constantly hugging you. So these are choices that we make. It's a smorgasbord. We have a smorgasbord of things that can shift us out of a bad place into a better place. And, and just ask yourself the question, am I feeding my God seed? And what am I feeding my God seed? You know, water, good water. Am I, am I feeding my body, mind, and soul, bringing it all together as one, connecting? Um, we have a moment-to-moment -moment choice. How much light am I plugging into when I... When, it, in, in it, when it's dark out, you know, people get depressed when it's dark out. What kind of light am I plugging into? I've been using, um, I just started using a green light. And I learned that from uh, Peace Weavers just recently about plugging in a green light and just being in that green light because that green light does a lot and that's, that's an ancient energy. Um, so whatever you can do to plug in, you know, when you unplug your cell phone, it goes dead, right? So that has to be charged. Well, we are much more than that, but we need to be charged. So if we're not charging our being and really filling ourselves with what it is that we need to be able to go out there and do what the work is that we're here to do, and, and you know what your work is that you're here to do, you know that, honor that, honor you, thank you for doing the work that you're doing because we wouldn't be where we are without you doing what you do. We all have this beautiful piece together. And we all share in that beautiful light. And when we open our hearts and we bring that light in and we are willing to take it as much as we can so we can overflow and send it out to everybody. And that's what's needed. It's needed to go out there and blanket everybody with love. Right now, there's so much fear out there. So much fear. I've been doing world healing for over 20 years. God has blessed me with that. We didn't even talk about that piece. And I have my world healing pendant on this morning that God gave me. And that goes way back to Yanni. It looks like a world. Anyway, it's a whole other story, but um, it just, just, we are here, all pieces of the universe. We're here to help the world to heal. What tapes are playing in the background in your head? Get rid of them and replace them with what beauty, what, what makes you feel good? 
What is something that's beautiful to you? And then use that on a constant basis, every moment to moment, whether it's music, reading, what are you doing? What are you feeding your mind with on a daily basis? Are you reading something that's really, really good that's gonna say, oh yeah, that reminds me of what I'm here to do. I'm here, I'm not here for vacation. I'm here to be loved and to love. I've been painting rocks lately because guess what? I needed to get back into creation when I'm creating on with God. And I've been having a great time. I'm not an artist by any means. What are you doing with yourself? What are you feeding yourself? Get in and feed yourself. Bring your vibration up as high as you can. Meditation is the best way to do that. And it doesn't have to take a long time, but the more, the more time you spend in meditation, and meditation isn't just sitting and being quiet, walking around, looking at the beautiful trees and the flowers and the birds and the bees and the butterflies and just feeling the grass on your feet and seeing the beautiful colors of the grass. That's all meditation. So start wherever you need to start. Go wherever you need to go. Just get grounded in your beautiful God seed. Feed it. Feel it. Share it. Open that heart. The hearts can't be closed right now. They need to open. When I do my cherry yoga, we're doing a lot of on Wednesday mornings, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, I'm doing cherry yoga on, on Zoom. Uh, but, um, but it's about opening that heart. It's about strengthening the back, these back wings. We came here, we're angels on the planet without our wings. We really have wings, we just can't see them. But strengthening those, bringing that back and really opening that heart and getting into that creative center and bring that beauty, that love and that light and that creative energy. But it can't get in if you're not feeding the God seed, right? It just can't. So connect yourself. Connect yourself and, and get out of stress and get yourself blessed. I have fingers. I'm blessed for these fingers. I'm blessed for breath. I'm blessed for eyes. I'm blessed for ears. Where's your gratitude? Be in the gratitude of all the minute pieces. There's so many. There's so many. Our, our organs are working. You know, we're not laying in a hospital. There's so much to be to feel blessed for. Gratitude is the biggest piece. I've been teaching gratitude um, for 20 years. It's a big piece of what I've been doing on the planet is teaching people about gratitude. And if you can go into gratitude, the heart has no, the heart has no, there's no divinity, there's no duality in the heart. The heart is only love. So if you can get yourself into your heart, you're where you need to be. You're connected. And that's it. And it's not that hard. Body, mind, soul, exercise. What am I feeding my thoughts? What am I reading? What am I eating? Am I exercising? Even if you're not exercising out there, you can just stand there and just jump. A little bit of jump. You can put your hands on the floor and jump. That moves the fascia in the body. I just taught my yoga class that the other day. You just, just in, a, in, a, in a triangle pose, just jump with your feet, just your feet. And you're shaking the fashion, you're jumping, you're getting the toxins jumping out of your body. You don't have to go do a lot of exercise. But man, that will shift. It doesn't take a lot. Just takes a little. And the more you do, if you do it a little bit, then you're like, oh, that felt really good. Let me do a little more next time. You know, and you just keep building upon that. You're building a whole beautiful new foundation now. We've been given an opportunity to go within, whether we wanted it or not. We are here. We are in. Do the work. Feed yourselves.